community. Uh, I think there was a former city councilman who called me, I think it was uh, New Year's Day, and his, one of his houses had been broken into and they took all the copper out of it, you know. So it, it's impacting everybody. Yes, it's, it's one of the public safety issues we need to do something about. And as I work with the chief and state police and we put together a plan, uh, hopefully we can begin to knock off some of these issues that are impacting us. We're, we're going to try, I can promise you that. you got a tough job. I'm a housing provider of the community in the city of Atlanta. Those gentlemen just sat in front of me. We can't hear you. Closer to the mouth, that better. Okay. Anyways, Terry Gross, I've been in the real estate business in town for 50 years. And uh, what the gentleman just said, I'm reiterating it. Uh, National Guard troops coming to Flint, Michigan, everybody laughed at me seven years ago when I suggested this. And now we have a, a state takeover. We still, hey, haven't hey, got hey, them. Hey, we still haven't got the National Guard here. And for what reason, I don't know. I guess. Myself, I've lost two-thirds of my net worth because of this vandalism. There hasn't been a felon charge when about 70% of the metal that goes to these scrap yards is stolen. 70% of the metal going to these. And nothing, there hasn't been a felony charge on anybody. What are we going to do with this? I mean, yeah. the same way with the people in jail down here. We're treating them, uh, I guess it costs twenty twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 a year to keep them. We got all that vacant property over there. Why don't we set up some tents and put them in instead of giving them tickets? And we're way out of whack here. This is an emergency. Manager, we need emergency steps. And I basically would like to know take off the kids' gloves and handle the problem properly. Thank you. All right, I appreciate those comments. Uh, I think what I'd say, I asked the chief to come up for a minute, but uh, one of the things he's said, and certainly meetings I've had with the state police, is that we have to have our city lockup open, okay? Because we have no place to put people, and when they get appearance tickets, they're sort of laughing at the police and not showing up. And that's serious. I mean, they're just not showing up. So it's a continuing cycle. So. One of the things we're looking at is that city lockup. And what I could say to you there is, is I know if we just open the lockup and we don't have the cooperation of the judges and the prosecutor and even the sheriff on the other side of the street with the county jail, because that's overcrowded, is that we'll open that and it'll be overcrowded in a month or two and we still back in the same position. So it's something we need to address but we need to do it as a system. So I am reaching out to the county on the other side of the street to try to uh, create a criminal justice uh, uh, policy council and that they would begin to look at this uh, uh, as a system. So, uh, Chief, I don't know if you'd want to just make a couple of comments about the challenges you've had and how you're addressing them. I think that would be helpful. Good afternoon. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> but uh, addressing the scrappers, what, what we're doing is this. Now, everybody knows the scrappers are all over the place. I was looking at the news before I got here. Flint Township is claimed, complaining about the scrappers. The scrappers are everywhere. Now, what, what we did now, obviously we're in a deficit, as the manager said. Now, we do not have the amount of police officers that we had in the past. You call the police, they showed up. That is, is, is a problem. We understand that's a problem. But we got a deficit also. Now, I'm not going to sit here and, and make any excuses for that. I'm asking for all the officers I can get. But that's me. My job is public safety. Kind of mechanism. Now, whether Public Act 4 is that mechanism, I didn't write the law. But uh, what I can say is that we need ways to address the kinds of challenges that we're facing in this, in the 
Bud community today. And once we get it back on track, I think, I can't tell you, as soon as we can hand it back to the mayor and the city council, that's what I want to do. So, but there are some criteria that we're in violation of. We're going to be about the business of focusing on that and getting us on the right side of those as quick as possible. Hi, I'm John Fennessy. I believe I spoke to you before, Mr. Brown. I had uh, two questions. One question was a social uh, question. It was uh, concerning the scrapping, but I'm not even going to address that. That's, uh, it's out of hand. But uh, the other question I had was, uh, I know we received a, um, a stabilization bond from the state before, and I know um, we put about $68 million into the water plan, and uh, I heard we only had like $8 million more to go to get it up and running. And I know the water plant used to feed 200,000 people at one time here in the city of Flint, and is, the population is down to 100,000. And uh, I was wondering if we could utilize that grant to get that facility back and running. It would create about $7 million a year in profit and reduce everybody's water bill by probably 25%. And uh, that's an asset. And for some reason, uh, they think the state is trying to strip the city of Flint of all its assets. And I uh, just wanted to find you know, what you had to say about that. Well, I mean, I think you make a good point that the water plant can be upgraded, and that's one of the tools we can use to service citizens. Whether, you know, that can service in the long run, I, I'm not sure of that right now. Those are the kinds of things we're assessing. The, the other thing I'd say is the fiscal stabilization bond was really issued to help us deal with the past deficit. Uh, that deficit has increased, so we're gonna need more. That's, that's the kind of support that we need for the, from the state right now, just to get our house in order so that when we uh, build the fiscal 13 budget, we can do that in a balanced way and then begin uh, gradually uh, decreasing that deficit. Um, hi, I'm Bill Jackson again. I'll probably do this a couple times. I just want to make a quick comment about what Terry said with the scrappers and everyone else's sentiments about that. Um, maybe possibly we could do something in the city as far as licensing. Um, a general contractor has to have a license to come in and paint your house or do some drywall or do your roof. Um, maybe we should have some type of licensing program for someone to take scrap and require the scrap yards that are within our city boundaries. Um, for someone to show a license. You know, someone can't go and buy a bunch of pills and start a pharmacy without licensing. Um, so that was just a quick thing I wanted to say about that. Um, but back onto infrastructure, um, I know that we have a lot of infrastructure that's really old and outdated and needs to be replaced. Um, I know that we also have a lot of neighborhoods that are mostly abandoned. Um, blocks that at one point had 20, 30 homes on them, and now there's one or two or three of those homes occupied. Um, I think that that leaves a larger burden on the rest of us um, to pay for that infrastructure that exists. And what plans or what thoughts are there within the city right now on um, removing some of those neighborhoods? I know it's a tough issue for a lot of people. There's some families that have had houses there for a long time, but maybe um, allow them to have wells, um, just run power lines there. If we have full streets that have pipes underneath them and sewer lines underneath them that, that need to be plowed and that need to be paved that we can't afford. Maybe we can't afford those streets. It's a tough decision, but it might be a decision that we might at least need to open up the dialogue on. Um, the other infrastructure question I wanted to bring up was um, I see the Flint River as an amazing resource. Um, the world is moving out of the industrial age and into a new age, um, whatever we want to call it. In this new age, we're realizing that sustainability is a very important issue and how we produce our power is a very important issue. With all the dams on the Flint River that need to be rebuilt, um, maybe we should look into building those dams uh, to generate hydroelectric power. Um, maybe it could be something like Traverse City, I believe, if I'm right. I might be wrong on this, but I think they have like a city-owned power company or something. I know there are municipalities that do. Maybe we could have a city-owned power company that generates revenue there. Um, just want to know. Well, I thought the first one again is. Uh 
got lost. What, what was your first question? Uh, <laughs> the first one well, I, I mentioned about the licensing. Oh yeah, licensing. I think that's a good suggestion and that's, uh, that's something we'll take note of and take a look at. That's a good one. Uh, on the river being an asset, I, absolutely. We believe it's an asset too. We just got to figure out how to best use it. And uh, what about neighborhoods? Is, is it time to open up that dialogue about removing neighborhoods? Or? What I would say there is uh, the mayor uh, put together a team, I think, in uh, 2010 to go after a HUD grant. I think it was about $1.5 to uh, redo our master plan for the city. And I think that's where we want to focus on land use in the, in the community. But I think as uh, he has said repeatedly, I think we need to do that in a way that uh, takes everybody's concerns uh, into uh, any final decisions we make. And, uh, but could there be some ways that, that we could uh, have a new land use plan as part of the master planning process and still make sure the folks that are uh, uh, living in those blocks where there might be one house left or a census tract, maybe there's maybe only 34 four houses in it. I think as long as that's part of the master planning process, uh, then I think we can address those kinds of concerns and yet still make some change. And, and I think that's what uh, the mayor has really intended with the master planning process. I have a question here. Um, this is sort of a slow thing. I know you have a daunting task uh, with the uh, unfunded liability, law enforcement problems, the job problem, uh, education problem. Um, you're here for a limited period of time. And what I'd like to know is, do you have in your recommendation, are you going to have some changes in incentives? Incentives that are being My name is Sharonda Sumner and I was made in Flint and proud of it. How you doing? This is Anthony Kelly. This is Anthony Kelly down here in the Flint Car Show. See, Flint, Flint Tennessee Job Corps. <laughs> See, that's where I'm from. I'm from Flint Tennessee Job Flint, Corps. That's my here. school. You yeah, you know how we gotta do it. We good. We, we gotta represent it real good. Gotta Go represent it. <laughs> See, I like Flint. See, Flint is a good place. See, they trying to provide a lot of things for the young kids. They trying to make it better for Flint. See, if everybody pitch in 